Dear viewers, I would like to present to you a survey on compounds in universal dependencies, which we conducted together with my advisor Magda Shevchikova over five languages. My name is Emil Sloboda, and I will be your presenter today. Uh, first, I would like to introduce compounding both from the perspective of th theoretical literature and uh, how compounds have been handled in lexical resources. Then I will go over uh, how compounds have been treated so far in universal dependencies, both in terms of how they're supposed to be annotated and how that plays out in practice. And finally, uh, we would like to uh, propose an annotation scheme that seeks to mitigate some of the problems introduced by the current annotation scheme and annotation practice. Uh, so first, compounds are words that are formed by a combination of two or more words. And uh, these are words like waterfall, chernobrihi, meaning black belly, etc. And uh, it's difficult to rigidly define because it borders with both syntax and derivation and other word formation processes. However, it's not defined by spelling. Flower pot is a flower pot is a flower pot, whether it's spelled uh, together with a hyphen or with a uh, space. Um, we survey uh, the handling of compounds in UD and we find that uh, this that tokenization is based around spelling and therefore dictates the handling of compounds at this moment. And that makes inter- and interlinguistic comparison difficult. And so we propose an annotation scheme that seeks to fix this. We, uh, <coughs> we use English, German, Czech, Russian, and Latin as our languages because we understand those languages well and because they're well covered in currently existing uh, data resources. Uh, the debate around compounding has been centered around uh, a number of topics, uh, but to us the most important is compound relation, meaning uh, at least uh if whether or not uh one of the compounds components it, it plays a prominent role or if it doesn't if it doesn't it's a coordinative compound such as black and white or if uh one of them does play a prominent role role like in mother tongue which is a type of language not a type of mother Bissetto and Scalise proposed a two level multi uh, classification scheme uh the first is uh, component relation and the second is centricity. And this classification is being used in uh, the construction of a compound database called MorboComp. Uh, this covers 20 languages except Czech, uh, which are including all of the languages in our scope except Czech, but unfortunately the project is dead. So uh, we had to compile together a list of resources of varying sizes. Uh, uh, including Silex, Germanet, which is huge, uh, uh, Derinet, uh, which can, uh, which is smaller, but, uh, is a, uh, contains several, uh, dozen thousand compounds. Uh, the same goes for Wood Formation Latin, and, uh, the smallest one is, we have for Russian, uh, which is Golden Compound Analyses, uh, which is less than tw uh, 12, uh, 2000. Uh, compound words. Currently, uh, closed compounds are treated as atomic units, uh, meaning that they're not distinguished from other types of words at all, and therefore uh, their amount in UD is difficult to establish, but we can use the aforementioned data resources to at least come with a lower bound estimate. Uh, so uh, this uh, leads to wildly different numbers, for instance, as you uh, can see about half of all sentences in German contain at least one closed compound compared to 4% in Russian. Now that's at least uh, partially because uh, our sample of compounds uh, for Russian is so small. Uh, however, any sort of proposition on how to change uh, the treatment of compounds uh, can be shown to have uh, significant impact on uh, universal dependencies at the moment. Uh, regarding uh, open and hyphenated compounds, those are at the moment treated as subtrees, 
uh, with the head component as uh, the root node. Uh, <coughs> the compound, uh, the practice of using the compound relation differs significantly language from language. So we can see that in English, uh, there are thirty percent of all uh, sentences in English tree banks uh, contain at least one compound uh, uh, relation, which is in contrast to Latin or Czech, and we'll see why in a moment. Uh, the reason why uh, the compound relation in English is so common is because it's used for all noun noun dependencies, which in all the other languages usually is reserved for the n mod uh, relation. However, uh, adjective and noun dependencies are given the adjective modifier dependency, and this holds even in cases where the syntactic structures are actually visually at least very similar. Uh, however, strangely enough, noun adjective dependencies are also given the compound uh, uh, relation. In German, uh, we sometimes see that infle the inflection of the first ele element, in this case, altbekannt, uh, well or long known, uh, becomes a, a subtree when the first element is inflected, the longest known. And this is because uh, this induces a spelling which contains a space. And so um, the, uh, the structure is then broken down into two tokens. Uh, in Czech, the compound relation seems to be uh, used only for certain types of numeral dependencies. And here we see uh, also uh, the fact that Vatsetisits uh, and Vatsetisitsovi both mean 20,000, and the two expressions just uh, differ in uh, on syntactic environment. And just because uh, the Czech spelling convention tells us that Vatsetisovi is spelled together means that uh, these are both handled uh, very differently and the inner structure is completely lost in the first case. This is also the case in Latin, where magnanimous, which means uh, great-souled or brave, uh, is spelled together and therefore is treated as an atomic node. However, in uh, great soul, animus magnus, is uh, treated as two nodes. And notice how uh, when a compound is created from uh, these two words, uh, we see uh, inversion of the elements, which is interesting because uh, this is, uh, in my opinion, not trivial that this happens or in which languages this happens how often or in what circumstances, but due to the current annotation scheme in UD, this information is completely lost. And this is also the case in Russian, where Rukomajnik means a uh, wash basin, and, it, uh, and it's uh, traced back to mit ruki, which means to, to wash your hands. Uh, this information, in, in the first case, the hand element comes before the wash element, but in the second case, is the other way around, and again, we're losing information as to when and why this inversion happens. In summary, the compound relation is not used consistently at this moment, and it is underspecified because, uh, for instance, we can see that uh, the uh, stonewall and emerald green dependency are both treated as compounds, though uh, it could be argued that they're a different type of syntactic relationship. And interesting typological phenomena are lost, such as this uh, inversion uh, situation. So what we propose is a syntax-based annotation proposal and we want to unify the treatment of compounds so that it doesn't matter how they're spelled. So closed compounds should be split. The constituents should be assigned a lemma because when you split a compound uh, on a morphological boundary you sometimes get elements that are, aren't actually words. Uh, and uh, all compounds should be subtrees with a compound uh, hyphen relation tag and this is determined by finding an associated syntactic phrase uh, in this case pusti boha means devoid of God and the associated compound mean, means godless so we split the compound into two and we is assign a compound uh, uh, re relation followed by n mod because uh, the n mod is the relation that the associated phrase otherwise would have. 
Uh, this allows us to distinguish uh, the aforementioned conjunctive compounds from uh, the compounds which do not have a prominent element, such as uh, such is the case in Cher Chernobyl and Chernobyli, which means black and white. Uh, we also find other types of uh, compound subrelations. In this case, Cytoclas, which is a type. Uh, which is a species of grass that shakes a lot. Sitens mean, mean, means shake. Uh, we see that um, this is a subjective compound, actually, uh, and it comes from the phrase class tita, the grass shakes, so it's shake grass. Uh, this is in contrast to kill joy, which is an objective compound, because it comes from the phrase to kill joy, and uh, we see that in the first case we see an inversion, but in the second we do not. Uh, and uh, annotating compounds like this will allow us to study these phenomena uh, statistically. Uh, the uh, proposed annotation scheme also uh, allows us to handle the whole flower pot uh, uh, situation without losing uh, any information. Uh, this plus sign here tells us that originally, in that case, the compound word was spelled together. And in all three cases, we get the compound and mod uh, uh, relation, <coughs> which is uh, analogous to how other languages uh, handle their noun-noun dependencies. And at the same time, we respect the view that all of these structures are compounds, and we also aren't... Uh, uh, slow. Uh, we do not face the problem of uh, compounds being spelled together. Now, uh, practically implementing this uh, this proposal is not necessarily easy uh, because uh, closed compounds first need to be found. As I've already uh, stated. Uh, they are not distinguished from other types of words at the moment. Uh, and as, a, as we've already seen uh, so far, uh, the estimates vary uh, widely. So, uh, uh, the previously mentioned data sources do provide a starting point, but we need some way to be consistently able to find closed compounds. And there is actually... Uh, a tool for that uh, developed by uh, us actually uh, called parent which provides both splitting and component lemmatization uh, for Czech and is currently being developed for uh, the other languages as well uh, finally we need to assign syntactic relation labels uh, in other words to give the compounds internal structure and some data is available for that. Um, CLEX uh, does list a uh, bracketed structure of each of the compound's morphs. Uh, but uh, so far we're proposing a pipeline where uh, the parent tool is given uh, the word Chernobyl, black and white, uh, and splits it into Cherny and Bili. Uh, then this is given to a large language model, and we tell it to construct a phrase out of it, which uh, I've tested for this uh, particular uh, two words, and it did return Cherny Abili. And that this is input into UD pipe, which determines that Cherny Abili are in fact connected by the conjunction relationship. And this allows us to uh, build these structures. Uh, we have so far not implemented this, but we're working on it. Uh, in conclusion, we explore the current treatment of compounds and universal dependencies, be they open, hyphenated, or closed compounds, uh, and we discover that uh, the way that this is done varies widely across languages, uh, uh, but we propose that uh, this should be changed and that compounds should be treated analogously to syntactic phrases, regardless of spelling. Uh, and also, we are currently implementing uh, the proposed scheme into uh, a functional pipeline. Uh, this is uh, the list of references, if anyone is interested, and I thank you very much for your attention.